looks bad. Yeah, it's dark. Flooded everywhere. No one would buy this anyway. Gonna make a shearing film today, are we? Quiet. <laughs> Say hi, boys. I have company today. Say hi, boys. I won't show dad because he's shy. Give them your names. Travis, Cameron. Travis and Cameron. Dad surprised them this morning. They live not very far from us and he's shipping our corn. So they, he surprised the boys with a trip to the farm. And they knew exactly where they were when they drove in, didn't ya? Yep. Yep. Cool. So now you'll be on, on, you, on YouTube. Okay. You're okay with that? Yeah. I have their permission. <laughs> I have dad's permission. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay, that job's done. So they're all separated now. I gotta figure out numbers to make my pen sizes right and then make a feed sheet for Carissa. So this is gonna just stir stuff up again. So there might even just be some breeding, some random breeding in the next few days that aren't even really on a cycle. Um, but the females probably aren't ovulating, so it won't really matter. They're just figuring out life and partners. Okay, just printed off some new feed sheets for Carissa. Uh, we, I basically change a feed sheet every time I rearrange those pens, because uh, it just does change uh, how much each, you know, each group is getting. So, anyway, it doesn't take long. All right, I'm gonna give this to her, and then I'm gonna run across the road and start weighing market lambs. Okay, I'm over in the other barn, and I have to weigh all these lambs. They are about, they're just starting their fourth month now. Uh, they were born in April, May, June, July, August. And I have shipped a few already, but not many, I'm not, and none to the stockyard yet. So tomorrow I've got three that are sold to a store and the rest are gonna get weighed. And if they're 105 pounds and over, they will, uh, they will go on the truck on Wednesday night to get shipped to uh, the sales barn. So. It needs thinned out. This side's really full. This side's not because it's my ewe lambs that I selected. So they've got oodles of room. What I'm going to do is put up this gate across there and those girls are going to go to the back of the pen and then any that are ready are just going to come into this into this catch-all pen and then they're easy to uh, easy to load out of this pen. So I'm just going to set up now and get working away at that and then I'll catch up with you guys when I'm done. They're all, they always act hungry and they've got like full feed all the time. They're just chatty. Like me, I guess. So I had to cut my weighing. I just got done, but I don't have anything torn apart. We're getting, Mark just got a tornado alert on his phone. 
So we're running over to the other barn and getting it all shut up so we don't get water in it and so it stays upright. Hopefully. Hopefully. It looks bad. Yeah, it's dark. All right. Tornadoes yesterday in eastern Ontario. Really? Yeah. Guess I didn't go on Twitter this morning. I feel like I'm out of the loop. Okay, I got my curtains up manually. Just because on automatic they are working, but they're just a bit slow. But it's getting dark. And uh, I just checked the radar. It looks like it might split and go north and south of us, like the, the, the worst part. Chris has to mix one more load of feed, and I said as soon as she's done, bring in the telehandler, shut the, shut the door so everything's shut up. And then that's about all we can do. Um, Mark's just putting equipment away. We have had so much rain in the last 10 minutes or so. We've had over an inch and a half. We had like an inch and three quarters and we are flooded everywhere. So we took a half an hour little crop tour just to make sure everything was on the up and up and standing up standing up in the fields. Uh, we did get quite a bit of water. So over the weekend and today we've had three inches of rain, which is I think all of July we only had two inches. So pretty significant, I would say. Uh, I'm just running into the barn making sure this barn is dry. And then I'm running back over across the road and uh, cleaning up the mess that I left over there before lunch. But whoa, it's wet. We have a dry barn. So just getting those up in time, I think, helped. Uh, the only place where it kind of came in is just just straight directly under the curtains, which or just directly under the chimneys, which isn't the end of the world. That'll dry up in no time. <laughs> Got everybody fed up and bedded up and cleaned up and uh, and now I can almost hear myself think. So I was able to get this morning before the storm, I was able to get 15 lambs ready. So three will go uh, tomorrow. I'll get up early and get the trailer hooked up and head over to my abattoir. Uh, those three will head to the store that I deal with and then the other 12 I'll load up Wednesday night and they will go to the sales barn. Right now, uh, it is a holiday Monday. I need to get groceries and the grocery store is open, thank goodness, but it closes at five and we're sitting around four right now. I cleaned up slightly. I changed my clothes and I still cannot find, I have like two nice t-shirts, like t-shirts I can wear to town and I can't find them. So I just put on a clean t-shirt of Jack's, Arkell's. Go Arkells. Our counties are all mandatory masks. So I am sporting my, I have some viewers that have sewn me sheep masks. So I've been wearing them loud and proud ever since, well, since I've been allowed out in public. Groceries. Food. Oh, I hate putting them away. Okay, what I usually do is set up my handling system and, and put the lambs up a ramp. 
Uh, but because I only have three in this group, I think what I'll do is just put a halter on on them individually and just let them kind of run onto the trailer with me dragging behind. So I'll uh, put the camera on and give you guys some early morning entertainment at my expense, of course. That was awful. I won't do that again. Whew. All right, let's go. Well, that unload was much better than the last time I got here and I had a huge audience, probably because I don't have an audience. Uh, so yeah, just dropping them off here. It's about, I'm gonna say it's a 25 minute drive from home, but it's a nice little spot and uh, they do such a good job on our meat so happy to give them the business this is where I go well I am off to the parts store for the second time today I forgot to grab a an actual pod so the actual cutting pod and uh, we got the wrong one. So there's there's counterclockwise ones and, and clockwise ones, and I, t and I told the guy I wanted counterclockwise, but we got the wrong one. So I have the probably almost hour round trip, 40, 40 minutes round trip of this again. We have it fixed again. So hopefully this time we stay clear of the stones, but it's all fixed, timed. Uh, so one of those splines, we call them splines, I don't really know the term, proper terminology, that run in between these pods that spins the knives. Uh, when he hit that rock, it cut, they basically sheared, broke, it sheared it right off. Uh, and then the timing was all off and then the knives went flying and all the things went flying. So, um, yep, it's all fixed. Now he's grabbing the loader. We're gonna hook up the loader, get the cutter bar back on, which is probably maybe worth turning off the camera for. <laughs> Every time we fix this, we say, uh, it's good as new, we're not selling it now. <laughs> no one would buy this anyway. Yeah, they would because it's been locked. <laughs> oh. <unlucky> person. <laughs> this is when I shouldn't, it doesn't pay to share. <laughs> No one's going to want this when we're done with it. <laughs> I think we fixed it. That means our day here is done. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning. It's... Wednesday. Today is shearing day. It's a big group and he's all by himself and uh, I don't think we're gonna start till about 10 30.
Well, this was unexpected, but Mark got the haybine out and I guess we're cutting hay today as well as everything else that's going on today. It's a good thing because our hay went from just bud last week when we first tried to cut it and broke the haybine to now like flowered. That rain just went boof and brought it on. So, yep, we are now cutting hay, which is exciting. How was your first day with third cut hay? Well, it didn't break. We're not done yet, why would you say that? Because we're almost done. Oh, see, when you say stuff like that, it breaks. My bad. Well, I was going to say that you did a good job fixing the hay button. That's what I was getting at. I always do a good job. <laughs> Good morning, I'm just uh, building up the nerve, the courage, the energy for a good three days of hoof trimming. So I'm just running in to grab my new hoof trimmers that my lovely friend Megan sent me. So here we go. We are all set up, ready to go. My, my ladies are ready for their pedicure. So I'm gonna get going here. The other thing I'm gonna be doing is giving them their clostridial vaccine um, and they'll get two mils of Tazvax. It's all gonna get put in the Gallagher. And that's just so I can keep track. Uh, I like to keep track anytime I give a medication or a vaccine and just to know when I've hoof trimmed them. So I think there's 24 here. I'm hoping to have those pretty much wrapped up by lunch. And then if I have, and then maybe I can start on the next pen. And then I could get a real good, like a third of them done, done today would be would be kind of the goal. Um, so we'll see how they are. They just got sheared yesterday. I do shear them, I try to shear them before I hoof trim. Um, these ladies get large and they go in this turntable and the problem with this, they just sometimes think they're too big to get in and then they'll put on the brakes and fun fact, sheep have really good brakes and really good reverse when you're trying to make them go where they don't want to go. So when they're all nice and sheared like this, they just go right in and I rarely, rarely ever have to get in behind them and push them, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, a little bit about the table. This is a Vino turntable. I don't even know if they make this anymore. I've checked their website and I don't see it. They've kind of got like a flippy one now. Uh, so I don't know if this is discontinued. You'd have to maybe contact someone from Vino. It's a Vino unit out of Holland. Uh, but my guy is a local dealer about 10 minutes from me. So uh, I've had it since the first year I had sheep. So I've had it since 2012. And it's been, I really, really like it. Yeah, so we'll put the U in. I kind of tighten everything up. I'll flip her upside down. Um, and I flip them upside down. It's, it's easier on me. I can do it a lot faster when they're upside down. They're not flailing and kicking. So a little like shearing when they're on their bums or upside down. They can't move as much. And then I can trim her feet real quick. These are the shears I'm using today. Thanks to Megan from Quebec. She gave me the Falco shears. They, these are my favorite, but they're really expensive. So I have also been using these ones, which is uh, Burgeon and Ball. It's a little bit smaller, so I kind of, once you start getting dull, I'll probably switch back to these ones, but they're kind of hard. When you're getting used to one, it's hard to get used to the other because your hand just becomes muscle memory. But yeah, those are the tools we're using today and the turntable. So sad face. My brand new shears were, they came broken. So it's like bent, 
I don't know if you can see it. See this? And it's like, doesn't even... So, sorry Megan, I can't use them. I was really excited. Okay, I got one upside down here. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit off the, off the very tip. And then all I'm gonna do is take the sides of the nails off. And then it'll make it just nice, just like, literally like a pedicure. I'm just trimming up their toes so they walk nice and flush. And it doesn't, it doesn't hurt them, it's just, it's all nail. If you go too low, then it, then it would. It would be like hitting your cuticle, which is never good, right? So that's why it's important to keep them still. Because you don't want to go too far. So, sheep's toes curl around, some curl around. That's why you got to keep them trimmed. They don't really grow. They, they grow like a Tootsie Roll instead of like just, just nicely out. But, they're not bad. They're very soft. Which makes my job easier. Quiet! Something like that. So this Tazvax sub Q, so I just put it, I just lift a little bit of her skin in her armpit and that's where I do it while she's upside down. She's not, she's not doing this because then sometimes you get too deep when they're really moving around. So it's nice to do this job together. Okay, I'm just gonna scan her tag so I know who she is. Well, we finished, I think about, I think I'm just shy of 50 today. They were a dream. I actually timed myself on a couple and it looks like just the normal ones where I don't have to work real hard um, are, it takes me three minutes. I had 24 done before lunch and I just did another 20 here in a couple hours. There you are. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, hi. The one thing about the summertime and these bunks, I love them. I do love these bunks. But summer management can be a brute. Uh, if they leave even just a layer of feet on the bottom, it turns to like <laughs> muck. So every morning or every other morning, that needs cleaned out. And then I have to bed because then the pen goes mucky. I just remembered that actually yesterday was day 17 for that breeding group that I started, well, 17 days ago. So that was, I divided these breeding groups in half. So yesterday and today I should see some action if, if they missed on their first cycle and if they're cycling at all, right? Because in the summer they might not even cycle. So I didn't see, I didn't see too much activity yesterday. So I'll have to keep my eye on them today while I'm hoof trimming and I'll let you know if I see anything. Let's feed, shall we? 
Okay, chores are done. So I've got all the U's that were left over of the second pen. They're in here. I'm gonna do these before lunch, even though it's already 20 after 11 and I'm getting hungry. But I'm gonna get these guys done, put them back, grab that last pen of 44 and hopefully get them done today. And then that group will be, my whole group will be done in two days, which is a record. And goes to show you, if you keep up with the hoof trimming, it's much easier. Who would have thought? Okay guys, it is, I think my watch just died. I think it's just after six o'clock. Uh, I finally got everything cleaned up as good as I can do. And everything's fed. All the pens that I didn't get at this morning uh, are fed now. Yeah, it's been a busy week. This is just a typical week when I'm not lambing. And, and I think a lot of people wonder if, like when I'm not in the field and I'm just in the barn, this week was a good week just to document how uh, things quickly can change. I don't plan half the stuff that ends up happening in a day. Um, but yeah, so Monday, what did we do Monday? Monday was the storm, I guess, uh, but I had to weigh lambs. Tuesday, I was trucking all over the place and I think we fixed the disc mine maybe Tuesday? Wednesday, we sheared and then yesterday and today, we hoof trimmed and apparently today, might also be Frisky Friday because there are a couple ladies that are attracting some boys. They've been kind of running around all day. I haven't seen... I haven't actually seen any jumping, but uh, they've definitely got their sniffer going and a lot of panting today. So that should be interesting. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. Next on the agenda looks to be hay. Mark is going to rake that tomorrow and we have Danny lined up for Sunday and we have Cody, our rapper, lined up for Sunday. So I will take you guys along for the journey. But for today, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to the house. Thank you for being here as always like subscribe we love having you guys a part of our life and our journey take care have a good weekend